All right, tired of it. I've wanted to try this for a long time. Now it's time to make it happen. So, I'm a technology guy. I like technology. I have a 3D printer and I like to fish. So how does that mesh? You may ask. Here's how I'm gonna tell you. You ever wondered how crankbait's made? Uh, I think for instance, this is a uh, 1.5 crankbait made by Strike King. Um, I want to try to make one. I want to try to use some stuff that I have, use my knowledge to try to make one. First and foremost, this is where the disclaimer comes in. It should be like a cinematic voice, like, disclaimer. On another line, aka Tyler Waller, is not trying to infringe on any patent or copyright information here. This is just for fun. Can we build a crankbait? Can we throw it? Can we catch fish on it? I am not saying this is how I would create a crankbait. I'm not saying that this is even going to work. It's winter time in Ohio. I have to do something to curb my enthusiasm. So, without further ado, I bought some circuit board bills from Jan's Netcraft. And I'm telling you, these things right here are absolutely older than dirt. I don't even know if Jan's Netcraft even is a thing. Let me see real quick. I have I don't even know. Bingo, sure is. Still there. Mommy, Ohio. That's amazing. Anyway, I bought these things, I'm gonna guess every bit of 10 years ago. With the idea that I was gonna create some crankbaits of my own, I was gonna, you know, hand hewn them out of some uh some balsa wood. Turns out that was way over my head at the time. So I have these uh circuit board bills and literally they are made out of computer circuit boards which is even more cool because i work on computers but here we go i'm going to try this so i'm going to take uh these i'm going to try so this is a, a cheap knockoff of a 1.5 bait no clue where this came from i'm sure this is a chinese knockoff you can probably pick these up anywhere i was given this several years ago i was going to make a um i was going to make a keychain with it but i chose to use it or keep it and i'm glad i did i'm gonna use this for reference what i'm gonna do is i'm going to instead of making a one piece body or two piece body that goes together with the bill already on it due to the lack of precision they're pretty precise but precision is just not there for the 3d printers that i own so i'm going to choose to make a slot that i can put that bill in here um, a couple of things, I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to put the hooks on. I'm also going to have to figure out how I'm going to do a line tie. These are done with, with like eight, like little, little, um, figure eight uh, lure holders. And, and I was going to do a wire through it, but I may sacrifice this bait, try to scavenge those things out of there and see if I can get it to work on mine. So without further ado, we're going to look at this thing. By, all, by first and foremost, again, I'm not doing this from any kind of measurements. I'm just going on eyeball. Mine will never be the same as this, so I'm not going to knock off any kind of uh, trademark or any kind of intellectual property from any company. So please, before you start commenting that I'm breaking the law or whatever, I am not. I'm actually doing my own design. I'm just using one as a reference. So... With that being said, we're going to try to build a 1.5 style crankbait and we're going to try to see if we can get it to run at all and then we're going to see if we can catch a fish on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D print both sides of it, glue it together, put some epoxy on it, see if I can get it to weight uh, correctly. On the second video of this series, you're going to see me 3D printing it. I'm also going to look at using some software to create um, the see how much water displacement that it that it actually has the lure once it's glued together Which will then give me an idea how much weight I need to put in it to make sure that it's going to dive and, and work correctly. So This is going to be a really cool project. It's going to be in multiple videos This video will be designing it the next video you're going to see is actually being 3d printed putting it together uh, And then we're going to go out and see if we can catch a fish on it. So when I I actually put the video together where we're 3D printing it and making the thing. I'm going to actually airbrush it. It is going to look like crap, I promise you that. But let's get into this build and let's see if we can work our magic on this thing right here. So I found a picture of a bait basically like this that we're gonna use for reference. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be working here with Infusion 360, I'm going to work my way 
trying to build this so let's go ahead and bring in the um, the canvas here that I'm talking about so this is a you know again a 1.5 style crankbait and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my crankbait from the tip of the bait the front of it where the line tie is to where the last hook on the back would be I want to make that roughly two and a half inches. Again, I'm not measuring these things. I'm just, you know, eyeballing that looks like two and a half inches from here to here. Um, and then I'm just going to work my way around it. Again, the hardest part is going to get a profile that I am happy with and I think that will run true. Uh, then we'll be uh, getting the weight and measurement correctly uh, as far as getting everything to stick on there and, and run as it should. And then we're going to try to catch a fish. If all else fails, I know I can create a, a popper style bait that will actually work and catch fish, but we're going to start, we're going to go deep into this thing using this 1.5 crankbait. So without further ado, let's get after it and let's see if we can make this happen. So time lapse of me actually designing the bait. It's going to happen right now. Okay, so I'm roughly, you know, done with the profile of the bait. It's not perfect. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna tweak it here some more. So you can see how I've done it. I created a, um, a basically a block or a form here that I've actually just used as like Play-Doh and modeled it around again. I did use the 1.5 actual bait as a reference, but the profile is way different and I'm gonna have a circuit board build my, bill in mind as well as different eyes. So with that being said, let's get after it. Let's try to refine it a little better. Hopefully I can get it looking a little better than it is now. It kind of looks kind of wonky to me. There's some, there's some straight edges here that I don't like. So I'm gonna try to fix those. Um, and then what I'm gonna do at that point is I'm going to, um, you know, I'm gonna 
see what it looks like and uh, and try to I'll have to make some spots for the eyes I'll have to make a spot for the bill and again these bills are very very thin so they'll have to be glued in and epoxied in but again I don't want it to be one piece because again my 3d printer is not the greatest so let's get after it and do a little bit more refining to this thing and uh, hopefully it comes out awesome Okay, so I'm I'm fairly happy with this design here. There, there's, you know, I don't claim to be a, an uber good 3D modeling person or a 3D artist, but I'm fairly happy with the way it turned out. I am now going to try to uh, split it in half. I'm then going to try to uh, see what I can do about creating the slot for the bill to go in, which uh, could potentially be the hardest part. All right, so it looks very happy right now. It's got a, definitely a, a smiley face to it. I threw the eyes in there. I'm not going to put eyes actually in it. I'm going to three. I'm going to print, you know, paint those in there. Um, could actually cause the bait to run differently. They're fairly deep. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, so I just took a shot in the dark on how wide I needed to make these channels for the wire to go through. And again. Um, this plastic will be uh, either ABS or um, I'm probably not going to make it out of PLA because PLA is actually a lot more brittle. I may actually do PETG or um, ABS probably will be the material I printed in. I'm not going to get into a chemistry lesson with you guys. Uh, if you guys are 3D printers, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's different materials. Some of them are more brittle. Some of them actually print differently. Some of them actually, you know, are more sturdy. ABS is going to be the most sturdy of the, of the three. But... What I'm going to do is now, let's see if I can mirror this thing over and see what it looks like and, um, you know, see if it's, you know, going to fit what I need. So there it is. I have a feeling these sections right here are probably going to be too small, but if that's the case and I can always go, I know this one's going to be too small for sure, um, but I can always go in there with a Dremel or a knife and cut that out. Um, actually, the cool thing about Fusion 360 is I'm going to keep this model. If it doesn't work, if it's too small, um, I think my 3D printers are going to actually have a hard time printing that right there, but if it's too small, I can always come back, reiterate the design here, and uh, try it again. That concludes video number one of creating a 3D printed crankbait with Fusion 360. So, um, I'm pretty excited to see what happens here. Pretty excited to see if this actually turns out. It could be a major flop. Could be a major flop. 
Uh, I am going to tweak the design a little more as we go because I'm just not happy with it. It's not smooth enough. I'm going to smooth it with uh, the smoothing feature with Infusion 360 and that may fix it. But how cool would it be to go out, throw this thing, catch a fish on a crankbait that I designed and actually uh, printed and actually went out and it worked. Um, that's going to be, um, you know, that, that's, uh, that's the ultimate test. Does it run and will it catch fish? So video number one in the books. Let me know if you guys like this. Stay tuned for video number two. I'm going to print the thing tomorrow and then uh, we'll do a time lapse of that. I will try to put them together again. I'm going to scavenge the parts out of this old bait right here, uh, including the um, steel shot in here uh, because it should be about the same. And uh, the three hook eyes here with the line tie and the two hook eyes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And uh, until next time, get out there and lean on them. We'll see you next time on another line.